Hello everyone, welcome to another Java for Testers tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about polymorphism in Java. Now, the word polymorphism is derived from the, comes from the Greek roots basically where poly means many and morph means form. So polymorphism is derived from there. And what exactly polymorphism means is that many forms. When we talk about the Java language, when we do the method overloading or method overriding, basically, that concept of Java is known as polymorphism. Now, there are two types of polymorphism in Java, compile time polymorphism and runtime polymorphism. So in this particular tutorial, I'm going to discuss about compile time polymorphism, which is also known as early binding or static binding or method overloading. So Compile time polymorphism is achieved by doing the method overloading and we are going to understand how you can do method overloading and achieve compile time polymorphism in Java. So uh, let me open Eclipse and I'll, I've created uh, the project already. So let me just go ahead and create a new class in SRC folder. So new class and I'll say method overloading and let me give a package name here so I'll say com.rcv.pkg1 all right let me include the main method and create this particular class okay so we have the main method now I'll take an example of the login functionality so for example I have a web portal and my web portal will be having the login functionality and when we talk about login functionality, that login functionality can have the login using email and password or username and password or phone number and password. So there will be possibility that your login portal, you want to provide the user the ability to log in with different sort of combination. So now in order to implement the login functionality on your website, you will have the method to log in using username and password. Now initially say for example your website only accepts username and password to log into the particular to your particular web portal. So you can have a method say public void uh, login and it will accept two parameters so which will be of username which is basically string and then password is string as well. And then you will have the method body which will have the implementation how the login will happen so all the logic will go within these two curly braces so that implementation will go within this particular method now for now i'll simply print a console statement i'll say login successful using username and password all right now tomorrow you want to implement the login functionality with the phone number and password as well okay so how you will approach that so that's where method overloading comes in picture when we talk about method overloading it's basically same method name and different method signature when we talk about method signature it's basically the combination of the method name and the parameters that are being passed so if this particular method accepts two parameters and other method I define within the same method which accepts only one parameter or three parameter um, or different types of parameter then that is that signature gets changed for that particular method we'll, we'll explain that in a minute so for example now tomorrow I want to implement the login using phone number and password so one approach that you could think of is that you write another method with different names so login using phone number okay you can say that something like that and then provide you know the uh, parameters int for the phone number so int i and then string for the password so this method will accept or will help you to log in using phone number and password but this is not the approach that we should be taking this is not object orientation that we have been talking about so that's where method overloading comes in picture and what method overloading is basically we can use or we can have the same method name right 
but we can change the signature when we when we say signature we'll basically update either the data type that it is accepting so here i want to log in using phone number and password so phone number will be an integer so i can change this particular parameter the first parameter to the phone number or integer and then there won't be any error okay so here i can say phone number logged in successfully uh, using phone number and password okay just a print statement there so now if i have to call these method okay or or say for example user is logging in user with the username and password then this particular method should get called if the username is calling using phone number and password this particular method should get called based on the arguments that you are going to pass for you know login that particular method is going to get called and this concept is called method overloading when you have same method name in this case the method name is same but the signature is different here both the parameters are string here it is integer and string so either the uh, you know the data type needs to be different if we say change in the signature so i can also have something like i can have another login method which can accept phone number and password and then i can have another token that i want to give to a particular user to log in right so this method accepts three parameters now okay and based on what you pass when you call these method it will call that method accordingly and this whole concept is called method overloading in java and this is same as compile time polymorphism early binding static binding in java so let's understand how these methods will be called so now if you have to call these method what you have to do is you have to create an object of this particular class right where these methods are okay so i'll simply say method overloading class that's the class name and use the new keyword and create an object of this particular class now i can call all the methods that are defined in this particular class okay so i can call login and as soon as i'll call login you can see that i can i have three different you know methods they are same method name but they accept different arguments so if i have to call or if i have to log in using phone number and password i can call this particular method which accepts integer and string so i can here provide the phone number which is the int it has to be basically within the range so i'm just hypothetically taking an example in actual implementation uh, it will be you know a different implementation altogether but here just to show you about the method overloading i'm taking these examples so and in the password i'll pass the string so i'll simply say password say for example okay and based on what arguments you are passing in this particular method if i if you just hover over this particular method click on control and click it will highlight the method that will be called from these overloaded method right so you'll see that this particular method which has the integer and string as the parameters will be called and if i run this particular program you will see login successful using phone number and password being displayed now here phone number i'll change it to pin as well so if now for example i want to pass another integer which is four digit pin and you hover over click on control and click you will see the third login method has been called if you run the program the implementation within the third method which is basically the same method name but different parameters or different method signature in this case that will get called so you'll see login successful using phone number pin and password so we are printing these output statement just to show you which method gets called based on what arguments you are passing so these arguments or these para uh, arguments that you passed are being you know um, checked based on what parameters that particular method accepts and then the program is executed accordingly 
so these are some of the methods that uh, you can use so basically what we have learned here we have learned that you can achieve method overloading by changing the number of arguments so here we have three arguments or uh, three parameters right so uh, and here we have two parameters here we have different types so here both uh, parameters are of string type here one is integer and another one is string so you can achieve the method overloading by either changing the type or the number of parameters or arguments that you are passing in that particular method so this is brief about the polymorphism or the compile time polymorphism which is also known as method overloading in the interview in the interviews mostly people will call you know ask you about the early binding static binding so these all concepts or are the keyword which can be used synonym synonymous to method overloading or compile time polymorphism now why we call it at compile time polymorphism because uh, if if i simply remove this and once we highlight or once we click on this particular uh, you know method and say for example i call another method and i haven't run or i want to log in using uh, phone number or in this case let me say I want to log in using username and password so I'll call this particular method which which accepts username and password and based on the argument so I'll say RCV and here for the password I'll say RCV so I haven't executed this program yet right so if I hover over and click on control and click you will see that the method that will be executed or will be you know called is already highlighted so this is already binded so that's why we say this is static binding or early binding before we execute the program this you know code that we have written here still knows which method will be called okay so these are some of the key concept now going back to selenium documentation i'll show you the real example where this method overloading is implemented in selenium web driver so let me go to the documentation here and here is the actions class okay so if you look closely to this actions class go to the method summary and here you will see you have the method click right which clicks at the current mouse location okay this is the practical implementation so please note this carefully that's where exactly this polymorphism or method overloading is being used now here in the second case you have the same method name but it accepts the web element as an parameter so you can specify the target so basically if you specify the web element or the target where exactly you want to click then you use this particular method and specify the argument same as we have done here so if I want to log in using username and password, I'll just provide the argument as username and password, two strings. And if I want to log in using phone number, password and pin, I'll pass the arguments accordingly. So similar is the case here in the case of click. And then you have same thing for the click and hold. You can specify the target. Same thing for double click. So all these are overloaded method. So move to element. You can specify the web element target or move to element web element target as well as at what particular offset right so you can imagine how simplified the code looks so that's another good or basic advantage that it increases the readability so you know that you just use need to use move to element and provide the target of that particular element or if you want to move to particular offset you still have to call the same method but provide a target and the offset as an argument in that particular method rather than writing move to element with offset so another method right so that's not a good practice and it's against the object oriented uh, programming principles so this is the practical implementation where you can find the method overloading and how it has been implemented in selenium web driver so that's all for this method overloading or compile time uh, polymorphism also known as early binding static binding hope you like the tutorial in the next tutorial we will learn about runtime polymorphism in java that's all for this tutorial see you in the next tutorial thank you for watching